Welcome back to the Jack and Daxter Marathon, ladies and gentlemen. This time, we're getting two games out of the way. Jack X Combat Racing for the PlayStation 2 and Daxter for the PSP. I actually didn't find much in relation to Jack X's development. However, what I can tell you is that this was Naughty Dog's first entry in the racing genre. Before Jack and Daxter, Naughty Dog had made the Crash Trilogy on the PS1, and after that they made Crash Team Racing. I bought this game two years ago for the simple reason of... It's a Naughty Dog game. It's fine, but racing games are not really my favorite genre. Not that the genre is bad, but racing games, much like fighting games, can only be entertaining by yourself for so long. While when I do have friends around, if it's not Smash Brothers, it's some other game. So therefore, racing games just don't grab my attention. Just figured I'd point that out. Around the time of the Jack Trilogy, the Ratchet Trilogy was also going on, and in the same year that Insomniac Games had taken the Gladiator battles in those games and greatly expanded them in Ratchet Deadlock, Naughty Dog took the greatly beloved racing sections of the Jack and Daxter games and made that a game. Because, you know, everyone loved the Precursor Basin of the Precursor Legacy, and the Haven City races of Jack 2, and of course, the Artifact races of Jack 3. So this should be fun, right? Jack X is one of those games that I always saw and never really got around to buying. You know what I'm saying, right? That game that was always there, other people had it at school, and one day I was at the mall and I wanted to replace my copy of Jack 2, and I saw Jack X and I was gonna buy it, but the GameStop guy was pressuring me into buying Jack 2 instead. So I didn't get a copy of this game until 2012, but backwards compatible PS3s don't properly work with this game, or Ratchet deadlocked for that matter. So once I got a PS2 in 2013, I played the game finally, and two years later, finally beating it. For reasons I will explain later. I guess I was in the mood to finally finish it because I had just rebought the game because I had recently donated my copy to Some Call Me Johnny at Too Many Games 2015. When the game was released, it was met with decent reviews, however the black label version shipped with an autosave glitch that wipes out your save data. But I'm pretty sure the Greatest Hits version fixes it since that's the one I have. Anyway, the intro has gone on for far too long, so let's start the review. Jack X takes place one year after the Darkmaker invasion in Jack 3. Since those events, Jack and company have been invited to Crash City, home of the TV sport Combat Racing that's back in season, hosted by GT Blitz. I don't know what it is, there's something I really like about this guy, especially when Pecker becomes his co-commentator. You know, <laughs> I've been covering this sport for decades. Do you honestly think you can come onto my show and make me look like a fool? Well, you! Anyway, Jack, Daxter, Kira, Torin, and Ashlyn are invited by Crew's daughter, because I guess Crew reproduced. Crew's daughter's name is Rain, and she plays a hologram of Crew's last will, which is that everyone will race in combat racing to get Crew the trophy. Of course, everyone said no, then it's revealed that the wine they all drank is poison and they must race, including Rain. So if you want to avoid spoilers, skip to this point in the video. Combat racing is secretly being run by crime boss Mizo, who manipulates the races to his advantage. Sig joins the team, and Cleaver shows up to do... Nothing. Although I do say I find his character more memorable than in Jack 3, but still, overall he's a pretty useless character. And hell, they even made Jack and Kira love interests again. And Torn and Ashlyn are love interests again. So they fixed that mistake. We find out that Mizo was the one who killed GT Blitz's father on the track, and that he's going to try and do it to Jack and friends by setting them up against threats such as Razor. GT Blitz tells Rain how Jack was the one who left Crew to die in Jack 2, Mizo is revealed to be GT Blitz, and Jack finishes him off and everyone gets the cure. But Rain was evil the whole time and was never poisoned. Thus ending Jack X with a cliffhanger. Will the Lost Frontier follow up on these events and show what Rain will do now that she's the head of the mob? We've run out of world. No. I really like this story. It's simple, the characters used in it don't feel forced, and the acting and the animation is as good as it was in Jack 2 and Jack 3. Hell, I would even say that this game tells a more immersive story than Jack 3. I don't know why, but I always had this idea in my mind that Amy Hennig, writer of the Uncharted trilogy, wrote this game, but apparently not. And by the way, Andy Gavin wrote Jack 3 and not Jason Rubin. Just figured I'd correct that misinformation I got. The game is still in 16x9 and 480 progressive scan. It looks okay, but... Since this is a racing game, it's clear that all the environments don't have much detail in them because you're supposed to be speeding by at 100 miles per hour. Gameplay wise, Jack X makes one huge improvement right off the bat. You know when the previous games making one mistake meant doing the entire race all over again? Well, Jack X is just like any other racing game where if you die, you just respawn. Thank God. Jack X vehicles, for the most part, control pretty well. Power ups come in the form of the eco colors from the previous games. Blue Eco is used for boosting, Yellow Eco is the offensive weapons like a missile, a blaster, and a peacemaker shot. Red Eco weapons are for defense, like laying down a bomb or a shield. Green Eco is health, and the more damage you take, the more your Dark Eco gauge builds up, making all your weapons do more damage and you boost faster. The game has plenty of events, like the Standard Race, the Power Cell Race, where you have to build up your Power Cell attack by boosting, 
and then you kill the other racers and build up your score. The game also has open arenas where you fight other racers and destroy them to build up your score. My personal favorite is the capture the flag game, which speaks for itself as to how it works, but the simplicity is what makes it fun. I do have one big issue with the standard races though, and that would be the length. Races are only two laps, and can go on for upwards of four and a half minutes, almost twice the length of the Jack 2 races. Another problem is that the defensive weapons don't stand much of a chance against many of the offensive ones. So when you have four missiles coming your way, you can only block two of them, meaning you can bet your ass you're blowing up. Which can be fun in the multiplayer, but in the single player, it gets frustrating really quick. The single player as a whole can get very repetitive. The game has four cups for each eco color. Beating a race in the first place grants you a gold medal and three medal points, and you need 60 medal points to beat the cup, and you need 240 to access the final boss with Mizo. Meaning that you don't have to get first place, but if you don't want to do the same shit over and over and over again, you need to be in first place for everything, which means trying your best to avoid the bullshit of constantly being blown to sky high. The tours are by far the worst part, because you have to go on this long road of all the tracks combined, and you do it three times in a row, which can take up to 16 minutes, and you have to get in first place at least two of these. And you have to get at least second or third place in the one that you don't get first place in because you're granted medal points at the end of each of the three races. And therefore, if you don't get the amount of points, even if you get first place two out of three, you will still have to do it again because you don't have enough medal points. Fucking bullshit. It took me two hours to do the fourth tour. Do you now know why it took two years to beat this game? On the positive side, one of my favorite things about Jack X is by far the vehicle customization. I mean, you can paint your vehicles whoever you want, and customize the parts and upgrade their stats. I don't know what it is, but I love that aspect of the game. The soundtrack is also pretty good, but not something I'd listen to. And in terms of the extra stuff, Jack X has online multiplayer. Since this game has no HD edition, the servers aren't up, so I can't show you the online multiplayer. If you have a Ratchet Deadlock save file, you can play as Ratchet, and same if you have a Jack 1 through 3 save file, you can play as Jack from those games. And I'm guessing that Jack X and Daxter are being developed at the same time, since you can connect the two games and unlock extra content, but I think that covers Jack X. Daxter was developed by Ready at Dawn and released in 2006 for the PlayStation Portable. I don't know why, but with each passing game in this series, I find less and less information about it. But from my experience, Daxter is actually one of my most nostalgic Jack games. Got it on November 13th, 2007. Since that's the day I got a PSP, since it was the day Sonic Rivals 2 came out. I got that, Sonic Rivals 1, and the PSP had come with Daxter. I had never beaten it since I got stuck on the Crystal Hunt mission, but in 2014 when I got the Vita, I downloaded Daxter and soon finished it. But I don't have a way to record Vita slash PSP games, so thanks to the emulator PPSSPP and OBS, here we are. So what are my thoughts on Daxter? Well, let's find out. So one thing that bothers my overly specific brain is that people say this game takes place in between Jack 1 and Jack 2, which is not true. Jack 2's opening cutscene has a gap in time, two years to be exact. Daxter takes place after Jack has been arrested, before Daxter saves him. So technically it takes place during Jack 2. What's the significance of this? Nothing, I just wanted to say that. Anyway, Daxter is at a bar telling stories about himself, to which nobody takes him seriously, except for the exterminator Osmo, who has employees dropping dead or quitting left and right. So Daxter's hired. When considering a spoiler section for this review, I realized that you all already know what happens if you play Jack 2. It's a prequel, it has a predetermined outcome. So I didn't think this game needed one, but if you really don't want to know what happens in Daxter, skip to this point of the video to not know. Daxter does several missions in which he fights bugs, however, what's cool is that nobody knows that these new bugs are the metalheads starting their invasion on a small scale with scouts. The world building in Daxter is the best part of the game. We travel through a fancy hotel, and if you pay attention to the details, you find out that this is where Crew lives. Later on, we see Count Vigor arguing with Errol over whether or not Jack should be experimented on with Dark Eco or Light Eco, which makes his appearance in Jack 3 make more sense. We also see Kor thinking that his minion won't defeat Daxter, so he transforms into an old man and waits for Jack and Daxter outside. As for Daxter's storyline, you got me there, nothing happens in this game. I mean, we find out that Daxter literally forgot that he was supposed to rescue Jack, and he meets a couple of bland new characters like the Ashland ripoff and uh, this asshole. What, you sleep in the trash last night? 
Kor's minion was told to destroy Osmo's shop, to which he does, and Daxter defeats him and rescues Jack, thus ending Daxter. The story was okay, but the biggest issue by far was the bland characters. I didn't even find time to mention the fact that Daxter gets a sidekick that literally does nothing, so that covers the story, I guess. The game looks fantastic, of course, my footage doesn't look very good, but on the emulator I was really impressed and wished that the game got a PS2 release. Or that we got like a Jack and Daxter HD Collection Volume 2 containing Jack X, Daxter, and... The Lost Frontier. We've run out of world. What doesn't look good are the cutscenes. They look very fuzzy and pixelated. The soundtrack is also very weak. It's bland and pretty much all of it sounds the same. It's fine for background noise, but nothing more. Gameplay-wise, Daxter's pretty simple, honestly. You just... You jump, double jump, crawl, and climb. Daxter's default weapon is the stun baton, which is by far some of the most awkward combat the series has seen so far. It's very finicky and annoying, and you're likely to get hit in the process. Daxter's platforming is far worse than the Precursor Legacies. It's hard to describe, but just controls very poorly when jumping. Hell, that can describe the entire game. Daxter's controls are just very slippery from start to finish. Not something you can't get used to, but it's still something I consider bad. Daxter later gets a can of bug spray. The first spray is good for stunning enemies, and you can use it to hover for short periods of time. But once you unlock the flame spray, you'll never use the first one. The flame spray kills enemies, solves puzzles, and gives higher boost jump. But expect some bullshit, like this part. The last upgrade is the bomb, which is pretty situational for blowing up walls and kills big clusters of small enemies. Daxter's mission structure I like to categorize into three sections. The first section of the game is my favorite. Most missions are pure platforming in point A to point B. The second section is pretty bad. Have you ever played Shadow the Hedgehog? You know, the game with the missions where you have to find all the enemies and kill them? Well, that's this section of Daxter. And while there isn't an exact number of enemies, it can be annoying to have several missions in a row about killing X amount of enemies. But the third section is by far the worst, where every mission is a complete sandbox and no map. You can spend 30 minutes lost looking around for the exit of the stage, which happened to me, making Daxter a very tiring game to play. Daxter also has a lot of mini-games in it, and these are really annoying, because like a lot of them have no room for error, because if you mess up one time, well fuck you, game over. And then there's also mini-games you play for collecting precursor orbs. These are just quick-time events parodying various movies, and you play them to upgrade your health and such. You can also collect combat bugs for online play, but the servers are down, so there's not much I can say about that. And the bosses are also the most bland in the series. They're all easy and just drag on. I don't know how much else to say about Daxter, though. It's just... eh. Overall, while I seem pretty negative in this review, I don't hate either Jack X or Daxter. Jack X suffers from repetition issues, but the game controls very well and has a great story. And on its own, the game is fun but the single player is just so overly difficult and repetitive that it can be a turnoff. Daxter's also pretty okay, but the game has slippery controls and irritating level design and mission structure. Both games are serviceable as Jack spin-offs, but if you're a fan of the series and unsure of whether or not you should go out of your way to buy these games, I'd say they can be skipped, honestly. So with that said, we're pretty much done with the Jack and Daxter marathon, only one video left to go, and that's Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier. Fuck.